good evening and thank you for uh, waiting and sorry for the slight delay uh, uh, welcome to the press conference of 8th uh, governing council meeting of niti ayog we welcome at pib the entire ayog here uh, shri suman beri vice Cha chair of niti members dr v k saraswat professor rameshan dr v k paul dr arvind vermani and CEO, uh, Mr. BVR Subramaniam. Uh, that's how we will proceed. First, I'll invite uh, Vice Chair to uh, give you opening remarks, and for, uh, Shri Suman Veri, Vice Chair. Uh, uh, I will uh, just uh, make a few opening remarks. Uh, we are here because today, at Pragati Medan, uh, we had the eighth meeting of Niti Aayog's Governing Council. Represented on the Governing Council are uh, all states, SEO uh, members uh, of the Union Government and certain special invitees of the Union Government, uh, depending on the themes being discussed. And of course, uh, my respected uh, colleagues, members, and, uh, and CEO. Uh, this meeting was unusual in three respects, I would say. First, that it was held at Pragati Maidan. To my knowledge, it's the first formal event that the uh, G20 summit in September. Second uh, is that uh, this meeting was taking place in the year uh, of G uh, India's G20 presidency. Uh, and that had an impact on the discussions. Seven, those of you who were here last year would recall that that meeting took place on August. There's the great national debate on Vikasit Bharat and the Amrit Kal really got going uh, on August 15th when uh, Honorable Prime Minister spoke from the uh, ramparts of the Red Fort. Uh, but request uh, CEO uh, on the themes that were discussed um, and some of the guidance we got from Honorable PM. Thank you, Dr. Berry. Um, every year, I think it skipped one particular year because there were COVID and other issues, but we held that on VC. This was held in Prakriti Madan for the first time. So the first time that the convention pictures of the meeting are released, you will see it's a very grand structure. Uh, and, uh, and why was the theme chosen? That India should be prepared for the next 25 years. This is the mega. We will be a developed nation in the next 25 years. Uh, and why is Vikasit Bharat so important at this point? It is important because India is at a takeoff moment. And what is the takeoff moment? We are not only the largest, we crossed in the month of April by some estimates, we are also the world's fifth largest economy. But if you look at it, the fifth is going to become third in a couple of years. Two. Demography is in our favor, not just in terms of total numbers of people. Will has about the largest provider of working age, or the median age of our population is between 28 and 29. Just for a, to come for comparison, in our neighborhood, the average age is about 39. So that should, the time has come for India to utilize this opportunity. Countries which have crossed this particular level of development actually then go through a rapid period of sustained high-speed growth if the correct things are done. So we actually have a 20, 25 year period where if we do the right things and do things the right way, then the country can actually meet its aspirational goals. There are other things which are going for India. Digitization is very high in the country. The world actually looks towards Digital India as the Prime Minister said in the meeting. Uh, the, he said I've just kind of activity that is happening in India on the digital front is something which is actually uh, stunning the rest of the world and they're looking at us with amazed third largest uh, startup ecosystem. There are almost over 90,000 startups which DPIT has got on their records and uh, we have over 100 unicorns. So given our aspirational population, given the demographics, given GDP which is there at this point, given that we have in we are on the last mile in terms of resolving a lot of basic access issues like Sadak Bijli Pani, we are at a point where we actually now move from basics to actually going towards development. So I think that was the theme. The second is the whole world is looking at India. And that's what the opportunity for us to grab. And he mentioned that to all the chief ministers saying that, go and grab the opportunity that is there. 
and he has emphasized why vikasit bharat becomes relevant to states because bulk of the action to become vikasit bharat is at the state level beat industries beat electricity beat water supply beat skill development beat education beat health everything is in the states so i think that's where a uh, organization like niti ayog uh, plays a very good role and that's what the governing council is all about it is a platform where the center states union territories sit together discuss their developmental experiences look at the long term exchange notes and try to align their goals and their plans and strategies so that we all achieve uh, collective goals uh, uh, in his uh, opening remarks the prime minister did talk about a large number of things he said that all the people in the room have a collective responsibility to fulfill the aspirations of 140 crore people we need to have a common vision and we need to have a strategy uh, the 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 aspiration of vikasit bharat is not an individuals nor a small groups vision it is a vision of the people of india which we all will have to conceive and fulfill uh, the he also mentioned about the successful manner in which the center and states have cooperated in a couple of programs he mentioned the aspirational district program which is actually run at niti ayog where about 112 districts which otherwise are backward in indicators have been identified and states have worked to actually pull up those uh, districts on indicators and he also referred to a program which we are about to launch launched by the prime minister formally which is aspirational block program taking development down further 500 blocks in the country have been picked up because of poor socio economic indicators and to again give the same kind of focused attention and again beautiful words from the prime minister that also rise and then the national meeting itself had uh, uh, eight themes because it bharat was one which is the overarching theme there were six sub themes which were there which were identified we had themes like uh, ease of doing business and reducing uh, the burden of compliances health was there skills was discussed discussed and application of pm gati shakti uh, pm gati shakti actually uh, is quite familiar it's been in the news for a while but this is pm gati shakti with a slightly different tilt it is being expanded further it already has got about 1600 layers which are already there this is using pm gati shakti for social infrastructure and area development that means how where do you locate schools where do you locate health facilities where do you locate social infrastructure uh, uh, there is a program of the cooperative ministry of having uh, local godowns for food grains and other local produce where do you want to locate it you will have to see what is the catchment area so gati shakti to be used so that uh, it can be uh, uh, over he complimented the states amrit sarovar there are 50000 over 50000 amrit sarovars that have been built but he said why should we rest with 50000 if you have 75 amrit sarovars per district take it make it 75 per block so it actually is water conservation in a country like india water conservation is uh, is important uh, emphasize the importance of fiscal discipline we should not be profligate uh, funds should be used judicially judicious and i think uh he also skilly imprudent are suffering the consequences and he said we should all behave responsibly when we are doing this he also covered a large number of other areas which are very very close to his heart he talked about uh, and how they should be given special attention he also spoke about uh, having state level competitions for between districts there is an element of reward for doing good work uh, uh, hierarchically right through the system and uh, after the prime minister's opening remarks i think there was a broad based discussion on uh, uh, the agenda items all the chief ministers the uh, the agenda items a large number of topics were touched i do not want to go into the detail because it's a very long list uh, chief ministers talked about their visions of amrit kal what india should do to achieve 2047 they also talked about the core six items and some uh, themes and the some chief ministers talked about how they were using uh, pm gati shakti uh, in their own uh, states or union territories some of them have gone quite far ahead in using them in addition to these uh, there is uh, some other uh, uh, issues uh, some states spoke about their development models um, there, there were a discussion on uh, green strategies some states are actually trying to become models in terms of green development um, they also were talking about zone wise planning uh, improving tourism 
improving employment through tourism skill development was something which was very gross because needs to be known to be a quality nation and how it helps there were discussions on agriculture logistics a whole host of things very very rich and i think a very nice word which was used in the conclusion was bahut uh, hi mangal may vatavaran mein baatchit hui which was very nice uh, because it was so harmonious and uh, there was a lot of uh, you know discussion going on in the room on how things have to be done so i think it was that the pm was quite eloquent and uh, he also uh, referred to uh, some of the things they could do more and do better he talked about uh, everything that the chief ministers have said or given in the speeches would be followed up he was also very emphatic that the g20 is not a one off he said most states have now been exposed internationally and they have also their action plans was his request to states to f- you either become major exporting areas exporting products or promoting tourism so there is a give and take in g20 so he was asking them to follow up on that he also emphasized one thing because the theme is vikasit bharat he said i think it is essential that you you can't have a vision only at the national level you need to have visions at the state and district level i think that he said very very clearly that har state mein ek team ko gathit kariye ye team bahut hi saksham team hona chahiye and they can work with niti they should focus long term every state and local area should have a vision for the next 25 years and they can work closely with the center he said let us share the burden uh, so that we work collectively towards this vision of 2047 we should go for the big jump we are not looking at incremental improvements and i think that's the thing we 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 i we talked about take off moment i think in the concluding pm again said go for the big jump uh, he also said it's not going to be easy there will be a large number of challenges and these challenges are outlined somewhere early on in the meeting itself be disruptive both for businesses as well as for jobs the world economy is unpredictable geopolitics is changing within the country you have regional imbalances you have income disparities give you the benefit it can give so he actually said all of that is there we need to address it with a team india spirit i think everybody is aligned in terms of meeting these challenges and uh, the other is on two things there is a global opportunity you need to catch that grab it second are you able to raise yourself to global standards i think that was his pl- to what developed nations do and the way they work i think that's a very very key message if you don't think about it you will not reach that level and he said the whole world is focused on india and and that is very very important use the opportunity for the benefit of the nation and the people uh, he again reemphasized the importance of uh, uh, an aspirational and youthful population uh, he also emphasized billing and marketing uh, 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 unity malls incidentally were there in the budget they are coming up in many states it was discussed it was mentioned and he also talked about our iti's being reviewed revamped preparing for new and train them only for ic engines when evs are coming you need mechanics to imp- you know uh, repair your evs also do you have courses so i think that is uh, an important message here of labor we need to respect labor and that is what will give them quality work and i think that's something which is very close he talked about also having goals on health like eliminating tb going to the grassroots identifying and do that and i'd say in his concluding remarks i think his emphasis was let us have good governance he sp- and he says good governance is the key to achieving be it vikasit bharat be achieving any of the items which are there on the themes be it achieving women's empowerment and development i think this is very very important and i think that was it and uh, he expressed his gratitude and thanks to all the participants and minish- meeting finished around half past 4 thank you is another event here so i will not sir tarun sharma from z business sir aap meeting ke andar fiscal prudence ko leke baat hui sir to kya old pension scheme pe charcha hui 
और जो फ्रीबीज जो अभी स्टेट्स के अंदर जो चल रहा है एक कल्चर क्या उस पर भी चर्चा हुई एक सवाल सर उस पर है एक एनर्जी ट्रांजेक्शन एक बड़ा फोकस एरिया है गवर्नमेंट का उसको लेकर मीटिंग में क्या चर्चा हुई ये आप ओके द पी एम गेव एन ओवर आर्चिंग व्यू सेंग दैट ही डिन डिस्कस अ पर्टिकुलर आइटम बट ही हिंटेड इट ही बेसिकली सेट फिजिकल प्रूडेंस इज एसेंशियल बिकॉज यू डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू ओवर बर्डन फ्यूचर जनरेशन आई थिंक दैट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट सो कीप दैट इन माइंड इन वॉट एवर यू डू वी नीड टू कीप दैट इन माइंड वेन एवर वी प्लान एंड अनाउंस थिंग्स एंड आई थिंक द मैसेज वॉज देयर there was discussion at multiple points but i think it was in a very positive atmosphere understanding that you need to cut your you know cloth to suit it, whatever is there the other point which you mentioned which is climate change climate change was mentioned as a challenge and i think that was accepted some states did mention about you know ecology they are preparing some states who are planning to be green states some states are talking about wanting to be Uh, completely green in terms of energy either so we go along probably that is a subject we'll address more in future hello <laughs> sir neeraj who news at in india se hamara sawal ye hai ki aapne kaha ki kai muddo par pradhan mantri ka zor raha kai muddo pe charcha hui kai rajyo ke mukhyamantriyon ne hissa nahi liya hamara sawal ye hai ki kitne rajyo ke mukhyamantriyon ne hissa un 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 rajyo mein jo aspiration hoga use kaise address karenge main 11 मुख्यमंत्री नहीं आए बट कई मुख्यमंत्री आए और आते हैं उनका अपना कुछ व्यक्तिगत परिस्थितियां हो सकती हैं लेकिन दो चीज़ें हैं जो भी कागज़ है पास इन सब को हम लोग संज्ञान में लेते हैं उनको पढ़ा जाता है सभी को कहा गया बैठक में भी कि आप स्पीच को मत पढ़िए इसका मतलब क्या है स्पीच को भी हम पढ़ेंगे और उन्होंने ओरल वक्तव्य जो दिया होगा उसको भी नोट करेंगे और इसी के बेसिस पॉलिसीज बनती हैं थैंक यू Hindu business line, sir. You talked about what the center has said. Can you list three good practices which state uh, presented during the meeting, and can you uh, give give us the name of the state CMs who did not participate in the meeting, sir? Now, I think uh, let's focus on what the chief minister said. Now, since you said three, let me see what I can remember. There was a clear mention of a particular practice in Goa, and I think uh, there was even a request to circulate. details of that to all other states so i can mention that it it's top of my head because goa was the third or fourth states uh, there were a couple of others uh, i cannot probably remember haryana has a parivar pehchan patra which was benefits at the family level i think that was there then there uh, i'm i'm just trying to um oh just a second Yes, Meghalaya gave excellent. Thank you, Dr. Chan. It Meghalaya gave excellent suggestions on uh, uh, regional zone-based planning because he says don't treat northeast as one entity. Uh, we have a border with Bangladesh. Two, three states have a border with Bangladesh. Let's make a regional plan there so that the, you know we have a look east policy. the lookies to bangladesh is different from lookies to burma and you know they have a joint strategy so that they can plan in that area rather you know what applies to arunachal pradesh may not apply to meghalaya so you see which were which were uh, uh, coming up i don't need to list the 11 states we did not come i can tell you we had uh, mr soren from jharkhand we had mr bhupesh baghel from a lot of said there's, uh, there's dr uh, mr uh, jagan reddy from andhra pradesh so it was a mixed group there so you've said that we are in that stage of growth uh, now we are on a take off mode so did you identify any specific uh, challenge to sustain growth over the next uh, 20 middle income trap and all those kind of things yeah thank you so i guess we are at the point where we recognize that we are at the take off point and as the prime minister said we need to grab the opportunity we are aware of the challenges i think the job in front of us now is to crystallize a long term vision and crystallize a set of activities which will take us down the path a set of do's and don'ts because there's nothing which you can prescribe today which is going to be applicable 20 years from now so what you need is actually guide rails within which the country actually develops 
I think you will hear more of that in the next, you know, months, coming months or the next year or so. Uh, sir, this is Girish from Mint. Uh, sir, uh, you have explained that uh, uh, the PM emphasized, uh, you know, the spirit of uh, working as Team India in order to achieve this goal. Uh, but at the moment, you know, central and state governments, uh, will there be greater meeting of minds in uh, budget making at central and state levels going forward? Uh, you raised a very interesting question because that's exactly what PMAT said. I didn't refer to that. That's one of the points he said. He said, I have preponed my budget. By your budgets, you know what you're going to get from Delhi under various schemes or programs. So he said, please utilize that. This is actually a specific point he made. Please take advantage of the fact that I have preponed my budget so that you can prepare your budgets better. When the budgets used to be timed identically, states would actually, I, we all worked in states, we prepared uh, blind, not knowing what's happening in the government budget. Halfway through the year, we will then modify it based on what's happening in Delhi. Today, and he mentioned it very clearly, please. And he mentioned a second thing. There's another advantage get cracking in the first three months of the year. April, May, June, you should start three implementation of works in the first three months. He said you can sit back and wait for the next nine months seeing things actually happening on the ground. Sir, three more questions, sir. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, 22, then 47, then 91. Hello, sir Prashant from Financial Express. Uh, my question is, uh, since we are trying to be a developed economy by 2047, so what kind of economic growth, average economic growth that will require to reach that stage and what kind of investment we are looking at? See our economy size by 2047. Okay, we, we're not going to put a number right now, but I think the process is on. Niti Ayo, Finance Ministry, all ministries, and from today, states, we will be working towards certain goals. You know the definition of a developed economy and you can translate that at 2047, India will be roughly 150 billion, uh, 150 crore people. That thing. And then I think then you work backward. And growth, we have recovered from COVID pretty well. Uh, this year we're going to touch anywhere, you know, close to your, the RBA governor yesterday. So I think the prospects are good. There is a need to work harder, maintain the tempo and probably accelerate a bit. Right? Sir, I'm Shailesh Adho, ANI News Agency. Se. सर जैसा कि विकसित भारत 2047 का विजन है इस मीटिंग का एक उद्देश्य भी था तो जो स्टेट जो है जानबूझकर यहां पे नहीं आ रहे इस मीटिंग में तो इस इस विजन पे किसी तरह का कोई फर्क पड़ेगा और दूसरा इस बैठक में नहीं आने का क्या नुकसान स्टेट्स को होगा जो जानबूझकर नहीं आ रहे ना किसी तरह मंच है जहां पर राज्य और केंद्र साथ मिलकर बातचीत कर सकते हैं एक अच्छे माहौल में नहीं आने से आप वहाँ का डिस्कशन मिस कर जाते हैं वहाँ की जो रिच थिंकिंग है कमरे में वो मिस कर जाते हैं ऐसा नहीं है कि किसी को बहिष्कार करेंगे हम लोग या वॉट साथ तो काम करेंगे ही क्योंकि लोग अंदर रखे हैं और जिन्होंने भाग लिया है उनको नहीं देंगे ऐसा तो होता नहीं है लॉस इज दोज हु वे वी विल मूव टूगेदर एंड वी आर कॉन्फिडेंट बिकॉज नीति आयोग हैज़ अ लॉर्ड ऑफ प्लान फॉर द फ्यूचर वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट थिंग्स वी आर डूइंग इज we have now launched a state support mission. We will be creating NITI type institutions in all that. It's called state support mission. And our goal is all the 35 states and union territories in the country should have a NITI type institution to do long term reformly for everybody, no distinctions. Thank you. Last question. Earlier, NITI has made a 15 years roadmap, 7 years roadmap like. So are you going to make a 15 years roadmap now or is it going to be a state central level joint roadmap? We, it's a work in progress, but I think the prime minister has given the direction very, very clear. States and districts to have visions and those visions to be aligned with the central vision and we share the load in reaching that vision. So I think that makes it very, very clear. Thank you very much.